In February 2008, six adventurous Canadian pilots, grounded by typical winter weather in Canada, asked themselves a simple question. How can we fly in February? The answer was simple. Try the other side of the world, of course. Here's the first of our adventurers, Bob, checking out the local hardware in Toowoomba, Queensland, the starting point for our outback adventure. He was in such a hurry to get here, he lost his luggage somewhere along the way. Ingrid's volunteered to fly with Bob, but isn't yet aware that he will be wearing the same clothes for the next two weeks. As luck would have it, they will be in the air longer than the rest of us, as they are flying the oldest slowest Cessna any of us have seen. Say, Meet Mark and Gord. Uh, it's really cold Both like new technology, so they have been entrusted with the newest and most advanced Cessna available. By the end of the adventure, they will even know how to fly it. Button, but hopefully I'll be able to buy it there. Barb and Kim don't need a new plane to look good, so settle for something a little less flashy. And that's the Buttonville 6. Now meet Claire. He runs Air Safaris International and is the architect of our great escape. And Graham, our local chief pilot. I'm a uh, commercial pilot, but I'm also a lawyer. Um, don't, don't tell me lawyer jokes, I've heard them all. Together, they have agreed to show us 10 reasons why everyone should fly the Outback. A family of Scottish zealots and a pair of married Ottawa aerospace engineers round out the expedition's complement of 13. And we're off. First stop, Birdsville, and an introduction to reason number one. 200 people, one pub, and nothing but hot sand and stray camels. The word from back home is that a killer storm is burying Toronto. And that brings us to our first reason for being here, in Birdsville, on the edge of the Simpson Desert. They've never seen snow, and the only place to find ice is also the center of life in every outback town, the local watering hole. Graham's, oh yeah, Graham has uh, bought us the first round since we sort of twisted his arm and put the air there. But he's as good as his word, and then some. I, I was really pleased that the peer pressure paid off. <laughs> According to Graham, the very first thing a traveler should do in an outback town is to find and identify the waterhole over and above all other priorities. This is easy in Birdsville, as the pub is only 30 meters or so from where we parked the plane. The second reason to fly the Outback is that the clouds don't have a silver lining. Every Canadian pilot on the trip has had at least one close encounter with ice. In Canada, in February, the clouds always have silver linings, usually composed of ice or another aircraft. In the Outback, there's no ice, only a few aircraft and even fewer clouds. Reason number three that healthy Aussie glow. With not a cloud in sight, for shade and temperatures approaching 40 degrees the Celsius, it is easy to replace that Australia. pale, look unhealthy that. Canadian look with a healthy Aussie suntan. In fact, after about an hour of sun, you'll be looking for shade. The locals stay in the shade whenever possible, even digging holes in the ground just to get out of the sun. In Cooper Pedy, even the hotel is underground. Okay, on the ground at Unidata, getting fuel. Got all of our funny hats on. What are you doing? Oh yeah, there's Barb and Kim taxiing it. Reason number four, the flies don't bite. Unlike Canada, the flies in the outback don't bite, so the locals just ignore them. Needless to say, our Canadian bush fashion sense earned a lot of laughs and a few free beer, which according to rule number one, we of course had to accept. 
helps us here in the outback for butts. Could you just turn your head to the side so we can get this? It's not a growth. I'm going to I'm going to zoom in here. It's called the fly net. Yes. Reason number five to fly the outback. It's big. It's red. It's Ayers Rock. Up to now, we've avoided the tourist hordes, but no tour of the outback is complete without seeing Ayers Rock. It's like nothing one has ever seen. A unique natural sculpture, and if you get up real early, you can walk around it without getting trampled by the busloads of tourists. Reason number six, watching Claire make a tree sing. It's called the didgeridoo, or do for short, and Claire turned out to be a master doer. Number seven, discovering Qantas secret. Longreach, the birthplace of Qantas Airlines, is the home of the Qantas Aviation Museum. Qantas is the only air carrier in the world that has never had a major accident. We will soon be flying home on Air Canada, which has also not had a single accident in Australia. Deep in the back of the museum, we discovered the secret to Qantas safety record. Printed on a single piece of faded cardboard was a list of 25 rules, Qantas' very first pilot operations handbook. These rules are still followed by Qantas pilots today. Here are a few of our favorites. Rule number one. Never take a machine into the air unless you are satisfied it will fly. Rule number 12. If you see another machine near you, get out of the way. Rule number 14. Do not trust altitude instruments. Rule number 21. Pilots will not wear spurs while flying. Rule number 24. Never take a machine into the air unless you are familiar with its controls and instruments. Reason number 8. Claire's Surprise. A Scottish castle in the middle of the Queensland Highlands and a 3,000 foot grass strip all to ourselves. Just remember to always let the chief pilot take off first. This is the first time we've been in waves, everybody. I know, eh? He was a little worried about his takeoff. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got. No, he's off. He's off. off. Yeah. yeah. Reason number nine. The wildlife. Okay, so it took us two weeks to find our first kangaroo. We were tripping over poisonous spiders and the occasional slimy green toad. Reason number 10, seeing the world with a little help from our friends. The Buttonville Six got to know each other better, met a few new friends along the way, and most importantly, managed to spend February flying rather than shoveling snow. Oh, and Bob's luggage finally showed up, just in time for us to board the Air Canada flight home. I really wasn't sure what to expect. I knew I was very excited about this trip, and I've flown with a lot of these clowns around to different places before Australia, and always had a great time, and I would have to say that we had not only a great time, but a real bonding time. We got to know each other really, really well, and we had an exceptional itinerary. It's been absolutely fabulous. I really enjoyed the uh, variety of scenery. So now you have ten reasons to fly the Outback.